All right, so let's talk about the uh, next function, which is int to ASCII. So it's a void, doesn't return anything, and uh, it's going to be int to ASCII. And it takes two arguments, a radix and a value, int value. Okay, so you might be guessing that this function does the opposite of uh, what the previous function did, and you will be right. So what we're going to do is, let's, let me show you with an example. So suppose that we have um, that, the in, that the radix is going to be again 16, but remember you still have to handle between 2 and 36. So let's do 16, so hexadecimal again. And then let's suppose that the value, let's do a big one, is going to be 51,700 and, uh, sorry, 170. All right, so this function is supposed to convert this integer to um, to a, a hexadecimal number because the radix is 16. Um, now, you, so one of the uh, biggest questions that we get, one, one of the most popular questions, is, uh, you know, how how is how is this value represented in the computer? Is it in decimal or what? And the answer is that. I'm describing it as a decimal number in base 10 and we usually see it in base 10 but remember the computer only knows about binary and all the operations that it does, multiplication, addition, it does so in binary. So just keep that in mind. There are different ways of uh, doing this um, but what we, what we would like you to do is to implement this recursively. Um, and you, you might be thinking that this is going to make it a lot harder, but it's not, as long as you've done recursion and you understand it. In fact, none of these functions uh, in this program are um, particularly long, um, but you do have to think about them. And this is one of the nicest ones, but it is, it, it's relatively challenging. So I'm, I'm going to describe the algorithm informally, but you have to think about how to implement it recursively. Um, so, and, and I'll show you why it's so um, natural to think about it re recursively. So let's start by, um, and this is the usual algorithm. What we're going to do is we're going to divide by the base successively until we get to zero, and then we're going to uh, look at the remainders. So let's start by dividing the initial value which is 51,170 uh, and we're going to divide it by 16 and that as an integer division will give me uh, 3,198 and here you can see why uh, we created the diff rem function because the diff rem function is going to you can get the quotient using that function so you can call it from here in fact we also need the remainder so it's, it will be convenient to get the quotient and remainder at the same time so let's have a column here for remainders so the remainder for this one if you do the math uh, will be 2 and what we'll do is the remainders are gonna help us build the answer at the end uh, so we need to convert each remainder to its corresponding character digit. So it, this is 2 as an integer, but as a character digit, well, it's just 2. And you should, you should be thinking about what function to use to, uh, to do this. All right, so now uh, we look at this, at the, uh, at the quotient. If it's, um, if it's non-zero, we keep going. Uh, we do the same. So 3,198 divided by 16. And that gives you, if you do the math, 199. And the remainder is going to be 14. Now, 14 
as a character digit corresponds to E. Now 199 is not 0 so we keep going. 199 divided by 16. Uh, if you do the math that that's 12 and the remainder is going to be 7 and 7 just corresponds to digit 7 as a character okay and finally let's see 12 divided by 16 that's 0 and the remainder of 12 divided by 16 is 12 and that corresponds to C Um, now we don't keep going because we reached zero. So this is like a base case in recursion. And notice that this is, uh, well, let, let me talk about that later. Once we get to this point, we start printing the uh, digits ba backwards, the bit digits that we got here. So the notice that this function doesn't return anything. So it's really, it's not going to return a string. It's just going to print uh, a character at a time to the screen using the function put char and this is in the documentation um, but at the end it should print C 7 E 2 um, so this is very nice for recursion because notice we're just doing the same thing with the output of the previous iteration we keep dividing by 16 until we reach a base case which is 0 and we're always going to reach reach it um, and then once we reach the base we start printing backwards so we start printing backwards and that's perfect for recursion if you think about it um, so make sure you think about um, corner cases for example, what if the value was, um, uh, let's say nine? You know, that's that's your function work with that. It should, in this case, uh, it should print nine in that case, because nine uh, as an integer is nine in hexadecimal as well. Um, and what does it work with zero? For example, that's it should print zero. If the value is zero, it should print zero because zero is zero in all systems. So think about corner cases; those are very important. Uh, and then, what else do I want to tell you about this function? Right, I think that's all I want to say about that function. Um, one, one more thing, actually. Um, one common thing that we found in the past is that in some, for some students. Uh, it prints a leading zero, um, which is mathematically okay, but for our purposes, it's not okay. We don't want any leading zeros in the output. That's not acceptable. Okay, so uh, be careful with that.